up YouTube, Ian here, and you're watching Atkins Nature Aquariums. Today we're taking a look at my Waterbox Marine 45.2, uh, and it's officially hit the one year mark as I've posted this video. Not at the time recording, but when this comes out, it'll be one year. Uh, since I put this tank together, got water in it, and uh, started getting it going. And uh, this is going to be an update on how the tank is doing one year later. So, yeah. Um, in the beginning it had some clownfish and an anemone that split into two. I got rid of the anemone and um, a lot of the soft corals that came with this aquarium. And I switched it over to a more stony coral aquarium. And I am definitely liking my stony corals. They seem to be doing well. I'm uh, taking it very lazily, but methodically lazy. I don't know, still lazy. But I don't do a whole lot for this aquarium. It's very easy for me to maintain. I test it every once in a while. In the beginning, I tested this thing all the time. But now this tank has kind of matured a bit and uh, matured very quickly, I believe. By using live rock and live sand to start the aquarium. But yeah, we'll take a look, we'll see what makes this thing running. If you guys haven't been here before, this is Atkins Nature Aquariums. We keep freshwater and saltwater aquariums. We dabble a little bit of both and I try to show you guys what I'm doing. So let's start with the lighting. This is a 21 inch AI Blade Grow with the AI Prime 16 HD. It's also, uh, this is my controller board that I made from uh, computer server parts. It's got the ink bird and uh, that's the controller for the return pump, controller for the Nero 3, controller for the ATO, controller for the skimmer, and that is my Hydros X3, the big rainbow thing. This monitors uh, temperature, pH, and uh, level sensor in the ATO, auto top off reservoir. Let's me know when that gets too low and we'll get down to that later. But uh, yeah, very happy with the Hydros controller. Stupid easy for me to set up, stupid easy to program, and it's been reliable. So yeah. And the Hydros also controls the skimmer and the return pump, so I can do different feed modes and water change modes and everything shuts off at once and the skimmer turns back on after a certain amount of time. So that's how I'm running it. Down below is just a small little sump. Um, sorry for the wire management and having upkept with it as I've done my maintenance and pulled things off and stuff. So it's a little messy right now, but skimmer doing good. It's running, It's this is the Simplicity 120 DC skimmer, and I don't have, I got it used for free, really. So this skimmer cost me nothing, and it uh, didn't come with any, like, uh, silencer, so I just put a little knob on it, and yeah, that kind of controls the flow. Auto top off reservoir and return pump chamber, and that's where the pH and everything is. As for the tank, I think the tank is looking super good. Excuse me for a moment. <clears throat> but, yeah. The algae is getting better. The sand bed, looking clean. And I haven't done a water change in this tank in like a month. I think last time I tested out was the last time I did a water change. And uh, that was September 17th. 
So I definitely do need to test it, and I do need to do a water change. But, you know, corals, corals looking good. I am dosing Alpha Reef. I don't know if you saw the dosing pump underneath the cabinet, but that dosing pump doses 8 mils of Alpha Reef every day, just once a day. doesn't do anything throughout the day, just one time every day. gets it done in a few seconds because, uh, yeah, bacteria and everything. Calcium formate stuff. I like it better than two-part or um, I haven't used any of th anything else like two-part or Kalkwasser or calcium reactors so it is a good beginner um, dosing supplement if you're trying to get into dosing but yeah all the sticks and everything doing super well this green slimer I don't know if it's a true green slimer it doesn't have the same structure but it is a green stag and then there's this purple Acropora, and purple Stylo, uh, green, and Acropora, and a Forest Fire Digi, and a blue Digi in the back. Kind of see that popping up right there. Oh, oh, oh. Fix that lighting. I moved the hammers. Off over here, if you remember the hammers were up here. But I moved them because I want to make room for some more sticks. Got a torch. Torch coral is new. It's a two header. And I moved the Colostria coral or trumpet candy cane. growing Acan Echinata growing our Bower Banky is growing our Bubble Coral not so much but it's alive so Lithophylon another trumpet Lobophilia this is a frag of that Forest Fire Monty and uh this alveopora, yeah, I had it too close to the torch, and it it got eradicated almost. Maybe we can save it? Let me know in the comments if you think we can save this coral. And there's also another candy cane frag. Got a red Monty. Montipora capricornis. Just a plating shelf coral that'll create flat shelves. My Zoa garden... That coral is a, like, short polyp gani, but it's not, it's not a gani, I don't think, but it's a short polyp encrusting coral. I've got a chalice next to it, next to a favia, which is getting a bit too much light at the top, and yeah, maybe I'll shut the flow off so we can get a top-down view of some of these corals. I've also got some mushrooms. There's a mushroom kind of getting off right there. I didn't see him until a couple days ago, actually. There's a couple other little baby mushrooms. And there's more mushrooms in the back over there. So, yeah. We do got some new coral coming. Maybe I'll do a video of an unboxing. But, uh, yeah. More sticks and then another coral for the bottom. You guys will see that, though. I'm excited, but I don't want to, you know, let the cat out of the bag just yet. So, yeah. So I believe that's all the coral we have in here. I might be forgetting one. Oh, green bird's nest. Got a little bit of algae on it I got to take care of. But, yeah, green bird's nest. And, uh, these fish. Let's talk about these fish. So, the fish 
over the years, or year, have um, been really good. We've only had, I believe, two deaths of fish in this tank. First was the um, firefish. I don't know what happened to him. He just started, like, breathing real fast and was hiding a lot and wasn't eating. So I don't really know what happened to him. And then the second was the yellow watchman goby. And that was recent. Recent. Like, uh, last month. This month. Yeah, it was about last month when I added him. And um, I just have not seen him. So... I don't know if he's hiding out, but I am going to assume that he has gone off to Mother Reef in the sky. But the fish that we have put in here since have been doing really well. Like, we've got this uh, Royal Grama from Biota. Doing really nice. Getting bigger. He was so tiny when we got him. And there's also a Biota... Mandarin in here, a captive bred Mandarin, who's also been doing really well. There you can kind of see his silhouette. You might see him pop out later. But he's doing awesome. He's eating pods, eating flake, and eating pellets. And if I throw in frozen food from time to time, he'll eat that too. But, yeah. Most certainly eating all the pods in this tank. Kind of get a little glimpse of them. There is a possum wrasse. Such a cool, inquisitive little fish. And you know they'll be munching on flatworms and little nasty stuff that piss off coral all day long. Look at that. Speak of the devil, the algae blenny and the cleaner shrimp cleaning the algae blenny. Well, it's not really an algae blenny. It is a tail spot blenny. And, uh... Yeah, I have not really gotten a good shot of this before, so we're going to just sit here and enjoy that. So the reason they call them a cleaner shrimp is not because they clean the fish tank. They clean the fish and make the fish feel better. Sometimes the fish have an itch, or they have some skin on them that they don't want, or that's still stuck to them. And the cleaner shrimp just kind of goes around and... Gets him off, and then when the fish is done, he just kind of swims away. It's kind of a cool symbiotic relationship. And there he goes. So he's doing really well. And this Blenny I've had for a while now. He was in the 10 gallon, and then I added him into here. And the last fish that we have added is, not the last, there's still one more. The, the last fish we added was this clownfish. And, uh, yeah. That is Carlos from the 10 gallon upstairs. And I'll do a video on the 10 gallon soon. It's doing really well. But, probably my most favorite fish. He's got a little nick on him today. I don't know from what, but he's got a little little scale scruff or something. But that is my Central Piggy Pygmy Angelfish. And man, I just love marine angelfish. I love potters, I love the tiger pies, I love just the ebly eyes and the lemon peels. Flames, they're all so cool, but they get just a little too big, you know? They get pretty large, pretty large, and seeing a fish that large and a tank this big is just not for me. So, I got the pygmy. They're only supposed to get about like that, two and a half, maybe three inches, and so far he's been a model citizen. He kind of, you know, I, I can't say models and citizen. He does nip the Monty. And he does nip the green slimer. You know, but he's an angelfish. I mean, he's just, he's gonna do that. He's gonna, he's gonna do angel things. Angel's gonna angel. Say so they'll sometimes pick on coal, but he's not like picking it to death. And you can see he's picking 
all over the tank at algaes and at the sand and it's always grazing. And I just love his colors. It's it's not showing the best, but oh, there, that's a little better. Brighten it up. You can see he's got a little scuff on that one side. But yeah, he's been doing super well. He also eats flake and pellet. And I think we'll uh, do a little feeding here in a little bit. Why don't we do that? So I got a little bit of uh, pellets in there. You know, I'm not really going to spot feed them today. I usually spot feed the corals uh, while I'm feeding. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just kind of going to... I got the flow turned off for the sump and the protein skimmer. But I still got the flow in the tank. So this will flow all around. All the fish. It will get it. We'll blow out a little bit. Let them get it. Yeah, I think I'll throw on some music and just let you guys watch the fish. <laughs> 